and there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy. The comedy scene is ablaze with controversy as Cat Williams throws shade at key players in the industry. In a recent stint on Club Shay, Cat didn't hold back, causing a stir by unveiling the secrets lurking behind the stage. While he touched on various aspects, his spotlight remained fixated on none other than Steve Harvey. Steve, long hailed as the undisputed king of comedy, faced Cat's relentless accusations. According to Williams, Steve's success may not be as pristine as it seems. Cat's allegations range from Steve allegedly swiping jokes from fellow comedians to shameless self-promotion and cozying up to the Hollywood elite. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. Armed with what he deems incriminating proof, Cat peels back the layers of Steve's closet, revealing a trove of skeletons, and it may just seem that he possesses one interesting footage that will speed up Steve's epic downfall. The rift between Cat and Steve is no new development. Dating back to 2008, the feud escalated when Cat threatened to dethrone Steve as the comedy king. On Jamie Foxx's radio show, Cat boldly asserted that Steve's career would crumble the second they agrees to a comedy battle with him. But the second that you get on stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time as the king of comedy. Back then, the comedian got the feeling that Steve is not writing his own jokes for his stand-up performances. And in 2024, he went ever further, accusing Steve of cribbing his show concept from Mark Curry's Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Cat Heinz, at a Hollywood underbelly of Idea the Theft. As Cat says, Steve once attended Mark Curry's sitcom and walked away with more than just a few good laughs. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. As the comedian now claims, Steve paved his way to fame and success by leeching off other people's attempts to make it big. Cat also disputes Harvey's alleged period of being homeless and living in his car. You know the story he likes to tell his fans. Cat now accuses Steve of fabricating stories, highlighting the inconsistency in Harvey's claims. Steve Harvey was never homeless. Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago. He was making 3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. Stoking the flames further, Cat delves into the beef between Steve and the late Bernie Mac. According to Cat, he was approached to be the fourth king of comedy, but turned it down, wary of facing the same fate as Bernie. Cat implies that Steve's actions during Bernie's time signaled a lack of respect, as Steve allegedly believed he was funnier and should have headlined the tour. King's Comedy was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you gotta close if it's your tour. In a final blow, Cat asserts that Steve's career truly soared only after Bernie Mac was out of the picture, leaving audiences to ponder the behind. The scenes dynamics that shaped the comedy landscape. Now, Steve is under big fire with these new allegations about his lies and hidden agendas that made him reach the top while his colleagues fell into the public oblivion. In the bygone era, Steve was a part of the original Kings of Comedy, the show that showcased the creme de la creme of the comedy industry. Together, these comedic maestros captivated audiences worldwide, leaving an indelible mark with their razor-sharp routines and spot-on humor. Yet, beneath the surface of their collective success, internal tensions brewed, particularly between Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac. Is that, is that where you and Bernie butted heads? That was our only odds. That was our only odds. Behind the scenes, a simmering rivalry marred the group dynamics, leading to the absence of a second tour. Despite the initial triumph, Bernie Mac pointed fingers at Steve Harvey, accusing him not only of pilfering material, but also attempting to snatch a movie role. In an interview with GQ, Bernie disclosed Steve's alleged clandestine move to secure a part in Ocean's Eleven. Bernie unveiled unsettling truths, aligning with Kat's perspective on the whole thing between Steve and late Bernie Mac. Back then, Harvey didn't attempt to address these claims of being an ugly thief and a traitor because he was apparently ashamed of being caught. Later, another king of comedy deal. Hewley expressed his opinion on the whole story, and it didn't seem to portray Steve in a good light as well. Uh, disappointed, but I understood uh, that, you know, those kind of things happen. Apparently, Steve's whole idea was to tail the famous and funny men and steal their careers to make his own. Now, many people see him in a new light, and they slam the false king of comedy on social media. As one person commented, Steve has never been unopposed. I've never seen him as a king of comedy. He's a self-proclaimed king. And another user added, I didn't even know Steve Harvey was considered a comedian. I just thought he was a TV host. But it's not like Steve's ugly nature is something new and the long-standing whispers about the feud between Steve and Bernie became an open talk in the industry. Another king of comedy who was there to witness it all, Cedric, the entertainer, shed more light on the behind. The scene's tension confirmed the animosity between Harvey and Mac during an appearance on Club Shay in 2022. Sometimes people just ruin a good thing. Yeah, just cause, you know, they, you know. They... Describing them as alpha males who couldn't see eye to eye, Cedric revealed that the strained relationship was a key factor in his decision to turn down an offer for the original kings of comedy too. They both alpha males, you know, like they both, they just saw it different. You know what I'm saying? 
but at the end of the day, they was able to get through it. While Bernie Mac is no longer with us to address the situation himself, Cat Williams' recent bombshell interview provided another Steve's enemy Mark Curry with a platform to once again raise his grievances about the filthy nature of Harvey, and he was compromising his career. Why are you on my material? Right. You know, what's that about? You right. know, and then, you know, people want to jump up. Oh, he didn't know. He didn't steal your... So, yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, you know, so, you know... But Steve Harvey apparently couldn't just produce a single funny line on his own. And before he got a team of writers, he was shamelessly stealing from other talented guys. Cat Williams and his explosive candid talk exposed Steve Harvey's shady secrets and how he even committed Grand Theft sitcom by plagiarizing the whole Mark Curry's hanging with Mr. Cooper concept for his famous The Steve Harvey Show. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. It could have all remained the rumors if it was not to one recently resurfaced interview where the victim Mark Curry himself confirmed that Steve indeed stole his material almost word for word. Mark Curry was unaware of the whole thing until his good friend called him and warned about his material being on another comedian's show. Mark couldn't even grasp what it was all about. It ain't about the money, he said. Harvey got enough money, so it looked like you want some of me. You want to be me. But that's not the only comedy robbery Steve is guilty in. Cat Williams spilled the beans on other instances, claiming Steve did his fellow comedian dirty when he tried to snatch Bernie's role in Ocean's Eleven. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have. And surprise, surprise. Turns out Kat's words are backed by other people. Enter Ed Lover, who confirmed that Steve indeed swiped Bernie Mac's material because he couldn't stand the fact that Bernie was naturally gifted with a comedy talent. Lover added more fuel to the fire, sharing what Bernie Mac once told him about Steve and his ugly moves. The stuff that Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey calling to try to get Bernie's role on Ocean's Eleven and that kind of stuff. Bernie told me out of his own mouth. It's all coming together. Bernie's daughter, Janice, praised Cat for his candor in the interview, throwing another shade at Steve. It looks like Steve's lies are about to catch up with him and it's all thanks to Cat's witty remarks. Why would you do all of that man's stuff that he did on his show on yours and then do the dude's stand-up? While the most attentive industry observers already know the ugly side of Harvey and he's moving through his life by betraying and downplaying people, for many of his fans, it's going to be a huge exposure about Harvey's terrible side. Just remember what this man told to Monique during his show. When the actress and comedian was seeking support from Steve as one of the industry titans, he basically confessed to her that money is more important to him than integrity. I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me. Whether Monique wanted that or not, she kind of exposed Steve for being a two-faced person. She openly expressed how hurt she was by Steve's choices and pursuit of money before the money game is the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity worrying about the money. But Steve seems to have sold his integrity long time ago when he made a conscious choice to build a name on other people's talents. And no matter what he's saying now, people don't believe in his pristine image anymore. As one person commented, when Harvey said money over integrity, that told me everything I need to know about him. And another user added, I will support Kat any day. Steve is a snake and we see that when Oprah blackballed Monique and he tried to get Monique apologized, well, there's been a lot of talk about Steve lately and sooner or later, he will be forced to come clean about his rise to fame. But folks, what do you think about all this? Has Steve Harvey truly built his career on other comedians' jokes and hard work? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to check my other videos.